like to hand over to Roger, who's going to tell us more detail about exactly how we're going to release the virus in WAGS. Thank you, Alison. Uh, good morning, everyone. Alison's given you a pretty comprehensive overview and she's stolen a little bit of my thunder in a sense, but that's good, you can hear it again if I, if I, and we, there might be a few things I've missed as well. Um, to release this virus, we need to re make sure that we get it to the rabbits. And uh, for that reason, we'll be free feeding. We'll probably do that in perhaps half a dozen or more areas and see where we get the best uptake of the bait of the free feeding and that's where we'll be uh, targeting to to, uh, uh, to release the virus on the carrots. The carrots will be cut up, some of you will be familiar with um, 1080 baiting and it will, it'll be similar to that in the context of uh, you feed out chopped up rabbits, uh, chopped up ra carrots <laughs> and uh, I'll get to chopped up rabbits in a minute. <laughs> Um, once we uh, disturb a bit of dirt, put the, put the uh, free feed out and see where the uptake is and uh, after that two feeds we'll probably do, perhaps three if we need to, if we think we're, it's going to, uh, we're not sure, we'll see what we get and then uh, once that's done we'll have um, carrots chopped up again and mix up the virus in water and coat the rabbit, uh, coat, we will coat the carrots and uh, feed, uh, feed them out. Part of, um, of this control will be that uh, we've already done a spotlight count of the target areas we're looking at and uh, we're going to have to do another spotlight count in a few weeks to see how effective we've actually been in killing rabbits. Uh, we're hoping that after we, the first lot of bait has gone out, we will get some dead rabbit carcasses and we need to take some samples from those. They'll be sent off to uh, a laboratory to uh, be tested to see that the rabbit actually died of the Khaleesi virus and uh, not a bullet or uh, a trap or something else. Um, but of the infected rabbit carcasses that we'll have about the place, um, we're going to collect some of those and keep them. Apparently this virus will stay active in a frozen rabbit carcass for up to 12 months and so that gives us a second go at releasing the virus at a time we think is opportune in the future. Um, amongst, uh, we're hoping to save enough for that project but on top of that we're hoping to have enough rabbit carcasses that uh, some of you that are outside our target area over in Wandon or Monbulk, anywhere, anywhere you can go to Warrigal if uh, that's where your property is, take a carcass or a part of a carcass, break it up, spread it around, the flies will get, get to that carcass, presumably you'd put it close to a warren and those flies are going to infect the rabbits that are there and that will uh, increase the natural spread of the, of the disease and the, if we can get Carcass, broken up carcasses spread around the district will blanket it perhaps in two or three weeks rather than waiting <coughs> a, a month or two months for the uh, natural spread of it according to the wind and all the rest of it. And the vagaries of the weather are quite well known to most of you I think if you were growing cherries in the last season. Um, after we've killed as many rabbits as we can by spreading the disease there'll still be some rabbits left. They're not promising to kill every last rabbit in the country with this disease. We're going to have to get into uh, warren destruction and fencing, shooting, any way you can get them. Um, so that, I think, is an important follow-up after, uh, after the virus is released. And um, I think I've covered just about all of it in that. Has uh, anybody got a question for me? How do we know if a rabbit, if we find a dead rabbit, how do we know if it's a Khaleesi rabbit or not? Right, that's something I, uh, I actually had on the note here that I didn't 
didn't look at when I was speaking. Um, the rabbits apparently die. I think we've got some photos, have we, uh, Alison, of the uh, rabbit apparently stretches out and the head is thrown back. And it's a distinctive and rather unnatural looking pose. And that's, that, um, that is apparently the way you recognise a rabbit that's died from the disease. Um, you, your pet dogs or foxes, any other animal, birds that feed on the rabbit carcass won't be affected. Um, the, it's only the European rabbit that will be affected by this virus, but the animals that have, um, have a dog or a fox that has eaten the, uh, the rabbit carcass, um, its droppings will still be infective. So in a sense the fox, which most of us regard as an enemy anyway, might actually help us uh, get rid of the rabbits in a second way that uh, won't only be hunting them, it'll be spreading the uh, Khaleesi virus as well. How, sorry, one other thing is how long will the virus stay live in normal, in non-frozen circumstances in terms of if it's in the droppings and things, is it going to be another sort of couple of weeks or days? Or uh, I don't really have information on, on that. No. Um, we're expecting that if you, you take a, we, if we get a, a, a rabbit carcass, we'll, we'll cut it up into several pieces. Yeah. And while that is attractive to flies, I would expect that that will be, uh, the virus will be active. Yeah, it can't be too long, I don't think, Roger, because our enclosure will pop them up and freeze them. Yep. To keep them. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It won't last long. It's on, on this frequently asked questions. This is quite a useful four page document. Make sure you pick it up. And uh, do have it electronically if anyone wants a copy. Thanks. But it's basically not long. No in its free state, and that's why it's important to co collect your, your bait up, uh, particularly your baited carrots, collect them up again because they won't continue to be alive. Yeah, the bait, the bait will have to uh, be used re reasonably quickly because dried out carrots is probably not attractive to a rabbit. <laughs> um, are there any other questions? Um, whilst this, this process is going on, should we still be baiting for, for rabbits or should we sort of hold off so that there's, there's a greater population to, to take up the, uh, the virus? If you're, get a, you're presumably talking about using pin bone, are you? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you're getting some results out of pin bone, I think you might as well keep using it. Pin bone is, uh, is a slower acting for, uh, poison for them. It takes two or three feeds of the... Uh, bait before uh, you get a kill out of it. So you might find that uh, your rabbit's on pin down and it takes, uh, takes some Khaleesi, um, it'll probably knock it over because the rabbit will be in a, um, a sick state to start with. So if you're getting effect, uh, an effect out of pin down, I'd probably continue to use it. And uh, it's pin down, I, I think, is uh, not particularly effective in this area because uh, there's plenty of other green good feed that the rabbits have find attractive. But if you if you're getting them to take the pin down, I keep using it. I think. I think that's all I can pass on to you. We'll uh, hand over to Gordon. Yeah. All right.